<laughs> Welcome back guys. This is part two of the radiator support installation in the International. So uh, in this video we actually get it finished. I think it came up great. There was some trials and tribulations along the way, but yeah, that's building cars, isn't it? So I won't talk anymore. Over to you. Hope you enjoy it. So I've just cleaned up the um, the plate, the one of these that I'm going to make removable, and I've got some 40 mil, 40 by 40 mil angle iron. Uh, it's about four mil thick, and I've just cut a piece to mount on the top, and I'll also cut another piece that will mount on the bottom. So there will be when it comes to actually putting it on the side of the support here, there'll be a piece coming up above and below with a bolt or two on the top and the same on the bottom. And I will also put a backing plate on the other side, on the other side as well to go through, um, much the same as I did on the base, just to spread the, the load as much as I possibly can. I think it'll be strong enough. Um, I don't, I don't have any problem with the actual angle iron bending. I don't have any problem with the radiator support bending. It's just a matter of whether my plate can stand up to it, but that was going to be the case over here anyway. So, yeah, we'll continue along. So I've just gone through here. I've chamfered, so taken off ground off some of the metal off the plate here and the corner of the angle iron because I want to get a bead of weld down there and then I need to grind it flat. And I need to grind it flat so that it sits flush up against the edge of the radiator support. I'll also weld it on the, the sides and on the inside as well. But this one here, I want to make sure that I've still got a bead of weld through there. Um, so that when I wind it, grind it flat, I don't lose all that weld. Okay, let's get into it. I've already put three tack welds on there, checked out the heat that seems to be sinking nicely down into that chamfer that I put there. So uh, I'll continue going. I also forgot to turn the camera on when I did that. Okay, so got good heat into there. I'm confident that once I grind the top of that off, I'm still going to have plenty of um, weld left behind. So well, that's a good start. That's ground up nice and flat. Now I can move along to the other edges. Now, this isn't the exact shape that it's going to be. I just made the angle iron and the bracket bigger than it needs to be, and I'll trim it up to a shape that looks good. But this is where we're starting.
Okay, so uh, finessing this radiator support. I'm not gonna lie, it's um, been in and out, oh, probably six, seven times, just adjusting it. Because everything's still loose, the guards are loose in comparison to the body and the driveway's not level and so on. When I get everything level, which I'm happy with, then if I move something or bump something, then it falls out of level. It's actually quite hard to get to stay in place, but, but yeah, that, that's the battle. So I'm nearly there. I've, I've had to adjust the mounts on either side several times. I've made the removable mount and I'll show all that to you shortly, but I'm just about to weld on the passenger side. Um, I had to take it off again, weld that on, pop it in place, and then I think I've got the, the position of the radiator support right. Um, so multiple things involved in trying to get it right, but uh, we're nearly there. So I'll put you on time lapse, do some welding, and then we'll have a look at it. So what you just saw me doing was welding this on. This metal on this radiator support has some sort of contaminant on it. Even when I grind it back, it just pops and splatters and farts. It's crazy. Um, I've had that issue with this whole thing. I'm second guessing myself as to whether I should have used this actual radiator support and just fabricated something new, but hey, that's what I've got now. Anyway, I mentioned earlier that I was making a removable mount, so I've got that one, which is welded on. This one's removable, so it's still stinking hot from the welding, but this one bolts on to there, like that. So through those holes, and I've got captive nuts on the back there, and that plate that the captive nuts are on, where is it, is longer than it needs to be, just to help spread the load a bit as well. And then I've got this, and this was the original steel plate, and then a couple of pieces of angle iron, and then, truth be told, that spacer just there is because I mismeasured, so I've actually had to space it out a little bit further again. So that gives me a little bit, bit of movement across this way. So that was a miscalculation. Oh, that's hot. So that bolts on there. That sits on the mount. That sits on the mount. That sits underneath the right, underneath the grill to hold it in place. So. This is looking really ugly, and I will not be surprised if I actually refabricate this thing, but we'll see. So I'm just gonna sit in place, make sure this mount's in the right place, and if it is, then I'm gonna put some reinforcing gussets in it. Then it's gonna be called a day on this particular item because it's absolutely driving me crazy, to be honest. It's very unattractive, it will serve the purpose, and I don't know, it doesn't really excite me at the moment, but it'll do the job. So let's see how I go. Well, there we have it. It certainly needs painting, grinding, a little bit more gusseting and so on, but basically we are there. So we have the radiator in. We've got very minimal clearance. I would like a little bit more, but I think it'll be okay. It'll just depend on how much the motor moves under acceleration. It shouldn't move too much forward and back, but it has been known to happen. And if these fans flex too much, then it can cause a problem. So I'll look into that. So that's my only concern. But what I now have is the front panel work is not sitting on blocks of timber or wood anymore. It is sitting on that mount down there, which is very, very strong. I have a feeling I've got those rubber mounts in upside down, but it doesn't matter. They're the same size, top and bottom. And I also have this one over here, again I'll put some gusseting on that, but I'm happy with it otherwise. We have the radiator mounted to captive nuts, so it's all okay. And then down the bottom here, I've only got two of the bolts in at the moment, but down the bottom, those little plates. I actually cut that plate in half because I was finding it hard to get all four bolts lined up at the same time. It made it easier to manoeuvre with two separate plates there. So um, that's where the radiator support bolts to the grill area. The hoses that were on this must have been standard, I think, um, even though it had a non-standard radiator in it originally, because they all seem to line up pretty well. These parts here, um, off the International, um, 
I'm not sure exactly how this all mounted. I think it must have gone back a bit further or something. I'm not, I'm not really sure, but I don't need these parts, these wings up the top. I'm going to cut those off, and I'm not convinced that this bar is not going to be in the way of my grill. So if it is, what I'm going to do is remove it, remove the tops here, and I'll just run a reinforcing bar from one side of the radiator, so from here somewhere, just about where the blue tape is, there, across to here, and I'll weld it from one side to the other to make it so that my radiator support um, doesn't change size and shape when it, when it through a twist. It'll also make it a lot stronger. So I think that is going to happen. I'll use some 25 by 25 mil box section. Why? Because that's what I've got. And weld it from one side to the other. Cut the tops of these wings off. I think it'll clean it up, look a bit neater as well. But uh, I think I'm all good. Pretty sure I'm all good. My radiator is higher than everything else. I think, yep, this hose, I'll just have to make sure this hose doesn't um, lift up higher than the radiator because it could create an air pocket, but that shouldn't be a drama. The bottom hose, I won't bother showing you, it fits. So there's tools and mess everywhere. It has been an effort, I'm not gonna lie, it's been an effort. Um, I will make a shroud to put around the fan between the radiator and the fan, um, just to ensure that get maximum cooling effect. And as I said, the only concern I have is how close the radiator is to the fan. And we'll see. As I said, the radiator support, even though I've gone to all this work, and this has taken me a heap of time. And it's not because the task was hard, it's because the site I'm working on here is absolutely crap. I can't put it any other way. It's it's just a terrible place to try and line up panels and you drop things, they go under the truck. So it's been messing with my head. But I'm really happy to have got this far. But at the end of the day, if I have to pull this out and build it out of something else, I'll do that because I now have something that I believe is a pretty good template. And the only thing I would do is move it that direction a bit. So other than painting it and all that sort of stuff, then that's done. But we'll show you that later. So I decided I'd just go ahead and do this. This is a 40 mil square hollow section, 40 by 40. Um, obviously it's 40 by 40 because it's square. I've decided just to weld that. So I've cut it to exactly the right size, um, finessed it so that it really holds the shape where I want it to be. So I've clamped it and I've made it so that it is level with the top of the radiator here. Um, no other reason that I think that I think it'll just look neat and tidy with it being at that height. So I'm going to tack that in and then I'll take it out again, the whole thing. I've got to do some finished welding, I'll prep it for paint and all that sort of stuff. And then I'll cut off this round bar that I um, previously widened and I'll cut off the tops of these and I think it'll neaten it all up. I might just box in across the top here as well. When you can't see down to the bottom of it, it looks much neater. So hey, let's run with it. Let's get that welded in, then we'll call it a night. One of the things I always try to do, and it's exactly the same with this, is I like to make it so it's fully serviceable. So you can get to nuts and bolts, you can get your hand in there, you can get to ratchets and all that. So you can put ratchets in where you can rather than have to use a spanner and so on. So little things like cutting the corner off this here. Now I'll neaten it up, but that gave me clearance. It looks neater, but it gave me clearance to get my hand in. The same with just removing the corner off that. Um, again, I'll put gusseting there, but it actually gave me clearance to get my hand in to put start the bolt. Now, as it is at the moment, this whole assembly is just sitting here. So it's just sitting on the rubber mounts at the moment, and I can re release it by undoing these bolts just here, the ones for this removable mount. So removable mount. So I'll take those bolts out, and then this whole thing will come out. So here I am in all my glory, welding helmet on, lots of dust in my beard, not my nose. But what I've been doing is I cut the top of that off and I have ground it all back, welded it all up. So that's really nicely braced now. And I've just been giving everything a little bit more of a clean up. I've said it before, but the metal from this radiator support is contaminated with something. It is horrible to weld. But anyway, I um, have put a gusset in on this 
um, just some more umbrella stand and what I've done also is the piece that came off there I'm going to be using this there like that so I just cleaned it up I'm just leaving it in a few mil from the edge so I can put a bead along there so it'll all be nicely gusseted through there um, still got to repair this piece here so I'm going to cut it out and put that in there I've actually put another plate underneath as well so there's about four layers of steel there now and um, yeah this is just all captured nuts and so on from um, captive nuts for the mount that unbolts so it's all coming along it, um, it's looking better to me now than it did before it's amazing what lots of weld and lots of grinding can do to a really rubbish looking piece of steel but it'll come up looking okay coat of paint look a million bucks okay new day beautiful sunny warm day winter's day here in Sydney Australia so uh, what you can see in the background there is the enter but also just in front of that is the radiator support now I've spent way too much time building this thing but it is what it is so let's have a look okay so this is it just about to pop it into some etch primer so we'll throw that on there let that dry it dries very very quickly and then we're going to throw some satin black paint on it at the same time i'm also going to um, just clean up the chassis where the mounts go uh, just put some paint there just because just just literally for that small spot where they're going to sit so that i don't have to worry about that later because there's a bit of bare metal there now I've given this a really, really thorough clean up. I sprayed it with brake clean in the first place and soaked it to try and get some of that contaminant out because I don't know how it's going to respond with the paint. I still don't know how it's going to respond with the paint. And then I sanded it with some uh, 40 grit, I think it was, in some spots that I couldn't get to. And I'm happy that it's about as clean as I'm going to be able to get it. Then I gave it a really thorough clean down with some wax and grease remover. Um, and now it's drying off, well it's dry. And now I'm just going to use some of this um, Visa Eurotech Edge Primer. And uh, I've said before, but that'll just be a light coat. It will etch into the bare metal and it will give some good, good bite in there. I don't know the technical term, but it sticks really well to the metal. And then I'll go over it with some satin black, probably about three coats. So let's see how that goes. Got the Edge Primer on there. We'll let that dry out and we should be pretty good. I had sanded this, could not see any Sharpie marker on there whatsoever. It is so hard to remove that stuff. So that's what that, those marks are there, that Sharpie marker. Couldn't see it, comes through. Again, probably a good idea not to use Sharpie marker on things. Anyway, we'll let that dry. So I figured while I'm waiting for the um, etch primer to dry, I'm just going to clean up these edges. I have hacked the life out of these parts here and the same over this side. When I couldn't get the radiator support back out the other day, I went on the total destruction path. Um, so now I'm gonna try and rectify some of that. So essentially I've got nearly every air tool that I own and I'm going to use that to try and get into this tight spot. Okay, I sanded this back with some green scotch bright. I've given it uh, oh, sort of one and a half coats of um, the satin black paint. It's amazing what difference paint makes. As the old saying goes, a grinder and paint makes us the world or we ain't. Well, you know, I don't know if that necessarily applies to me, but it um, looks much better. I've also uh, wire wheeled and sanded this um, chassis pawn, whatever you want to call it, back and put just light dusting of etch primer on it. Again, that's not necessarily going to be the finish. I just want to make it clean and black underneath the um, radio support when I put it in. So if it takes me a while to get back to it, at least it'll look attractive in the meantime. Uh, this I've done the same. You can see, I'm not trying to do thorough, but I um, sanded it, wire wheeled it, gave it a, a clean um, etch prime, and then I've put one light coat of black on it so far. And uh, part of the reason on that side was that I wanted the chassis number to be visible. So it's neatening it all up. I also went through and 
cleaned up these inner guard parts that I had previously completely hacked off, knowing that I was going to be taking them off in the long run. But I didn't use much finesse when I was doing it the first time. And yeah, same on this side over here. So once that's all sort of cleaned up and painted, it'll look good. Because I will do this entire engine bay. Regardless of what I do to the outside of the truck, the entire engine bay will be detailed to some extent. Okay, got a quick coat shot on that. Quick coat shot on that. While we're in here, the other side of this is where the bumper bar normally, uh, the bumper bar bracket normally mounts onto. So it's a little bit hard for me to show you, but I'm going to be running a bracket, making a bracket that goes down off the side of that horn, down under here, and then it pops out through that opening, or I may move the opening across a bit, and I'll fabricate a bumper bar that goes across here. I've got an idea, you'll have to wait and see what that is, it's going to be pretty simple, it'll be fabricated, um, but yeah, so at some point in time we'll be going through the process of making those brackets, making it strong enough to hold a really solid bumper bar, putting the bumper bar in place. So just while we've got this open space I thought I'd show you that. Okay, see how this camera angle treats you, eh? I think I'm going to get seasick. I've got a symphony of budgerigars in the background there. I look totally bizarre. Um, so I'm going to drop the radiator in and the radiator support. So let's see how this goes. You're going to get the uh, benefit of seeing the top of my head for the most of this.
making progress. So got the radiator support bolted in place. These large bolts that go through the rubber mounts here, they'll actually come up from underneath. And then these square nuts just here, they go on top. That's the way it was with Holden. That's the way I'll be doing it. So I've just got them sitting there just to line the holes up at the moment. So that's the only part that actually isn't bolted in, is the rubber mount, but both the top and bottom bush, a bit hard to see, both the top and bottom bush are there. Got the grill bolted up, and I've got the removable brace bolted up. The only part I haven't done, I haven't got spring washers on anything, because to be honest, I didn't have any of the right size. So we'll worry about that later. So that's what it looks like in place. Looks neat and tidy. Don't want it to stand out because it's not a feature. It's just something doing a job. So I'm going to slide the radiator in. And um, for the first time I'll actually take the cardboard off it so that if I do decide to start this thing in the near future then I don't have to try and fiddle getting the cardboard off later. So hopefully I don't damage it. Let's see. One. Oh, oh, oh. Helps put the washers on the bolts before trying to install the radiator, but anyway. Look, Mum, no hands. why you make things easy to get to. Socket. Oh, that was the best luck I've had all day. If that was a 10 mil socket, I would never have found it again. And as simple as that, after three and a half months of fabrication, not really, it's bolted in. So we have one radiator in a radiator support, which is holding up the mud guards and the front panels. Just need to connect the hoses and stuff. And it's good. And looking at that, I don't know what I was worrying about. I've got heaps of clearance between the radiator and the fan. I don't know what's changed, but it was only about a thumb width there before, and now if I can fit two and a half fingers in there. That's perfect. I'm thrilled with that. So let's put these hoses on. Nice work. Okay, I've just been playing around with the radiator hose for a few minutes. When I say a few minutes, I mean like 20. Um, because you know, radiator hoses, you undo the clamp and they come off, unless they don't. So. Uh, after levering and prying and spraying a bit of WD-40 down there and considering swearing, which I never got to, um, the hose came off. And I've still got all the skin on my knuckles, which is always a win. Took the hose off, decided I needed to shorten it on both ends. This is the lower hose. Shorten on one end, thinking it should fit, and it was still too long. So I've um, taken it off. I've shortened it twice on the other end, the part that attaches to the water pump. And... It, um, it's an old hose, I'm going to replace it with a new one. But all I'm doing, I've got it soaking in boiling water at the moment so that I can burn my fingers when I try and put it back on. But it'll also make it more supple, so I'll be able to slide it over the water pump. 
I'm not really here to explain to you about putting a water a hose on a water pump. What I'm actually um, just doing this little bit for is never be put off by the fact that you think you're going to just do a quick job and it ends up being a long job. Because something I've come to realise is when you're building cars, when you're working on cars, there's no such thing as a quick job. Replacing a headlight globe sounds like a two minute job. Then when you can't get it in and when the clip breaks or whatever, you know, half an hour, an hour later, it wasn't a quick job. Never be surprised that a quick job turns out to be less than a quick job. Don't be put off by it. If you start getting annoyed, start getting frustrated, go away, pat the dog, kiss the wife, whatever you need to do, and come back. It'll still be there. The problem won't have solved itself, but you will have calmed down. So, um, yeah, my words of wisdom. Now let's see if I can get this hose on without swearing. And just like that, 30 seconds later, hose is on, slipped straight on, because the hot water just softened it up. Haven't done the clamps up yet. The length looks good, so all good. And I've still got all the skin on my knuckles, which is great because, as I've said before, my other job is as a hand model. Do you have hot water left over from when you're installing radiator hoses on your body swap international Holton chassis? Well, here's new boiling water. Tip it on the weeds. Watch them just disintegrate before your eyes or over a matter of days. Burn them to death. Here's a handy gardening tip from Toxic Garage Customs. Well, as you'll see, I've put the cardboard back on the radiator, still working in the area, and I really don't want to damage the radiator at this point in time. So it comes off in 33 seconds, so that's all good. Only thing left to do, other than put spring washers on things, is to um, pop those bolts up from underneath uh, and put the nuts on the top, but uh, I can't do that by myself at the moment in the location I'm in, so that's later. But I'm going to call that a wrap. So. I hope you enjoyed that. This principle of installing the radiator, mounting the, the uh, front panel work on this International is pretty much transferable to most old truck body swaps on Holden chassis and probably on a lot of other chassis to be honest. But what I suggest is keep it simple. Um, I do see that uh, this hose is a bit kinked but as I said that's I've got to change the hoses and I think they're a bit mislengthed anyway. But this was relatively straightforward other than my challenges, um, because it's a Holton motor, Holton chassis, Holton radiator, so Holton radiator hoses and all that sort of stuff. I'll make up the fan shroud, that'll um, make it cool better, protect my fingers when I'm leaning into the engine bay. I may even make up a little bit of a cover, we'll see. I, I think I'll probably make up a cover that goes across here, just cleans that up, fills it in a bit nicely. Um, that'll all be part of the engine bay dress up. So we're going to call that a wrap on the radiator, radiator support, panel mount, grill mount, all that sort of stuff. And um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed. So if you did, please uh, like, comment, share and subscribe. And I, I'll actually repeat that part. If you could subscribe, if you haven't, that'd be fantastic. It really makes a difference to my channel for the amount of people that have subscribed. And if you think anyone might enjoy this, please share it with them and ask them to subscribe. Uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, so we'll call it a wrap and I'll see you next time. Take care. Okay, back on the inter. What have we got here? So now that I've got all these front, front panel work mounted and everything, the front panels and everything is sitting at the height that I believe it needs to sit. Now, i showing you episodes on how I got that there. I'm happy with that, that's all good. So now that I have got everything in the place where it's going to be, I can say I need to clearance a little bit more. So specifically just there, where are we? Just there, the inner guard, I've already trimmed it up, a lot to go around the control arm. The inner guard is rubbing on the sway bar. I think I've got enough clearance here. I don't think it's gonna come up anymore, but if need be, I will trim a bit more around the upper control arm and Okay, so I'll trim around that sway bar. I'm not sure exactly how I'll make it look somewhat attractive and factory, but I may come down on an angle, sort of like I've done on that side, sort of curve it away so it misses the sway bar. This side is a little bit different shape, but it is, it's hard to see. It's not actually hitting the sway bar, 
but I'll clearance it anyway because it's a bit close. Not too bad otherwise. Upper control arm, the back point there. Probably need to take a bit more out of that later. So I won't necessarily battle with doing that while everything's assembled. What I'll do, I'll um, mark it all out. I'll trim. I might trim that part up now just so that it, it um, is clearance. But I can mark it out and then anything that I need to change later on, I can do when I pull the motor out, when I pull this back apart and sort of play around with the engine bay, cleaning up and everything. Can't remember if I've posted it or not. I really can't, but um, these inner guards were all quite damaged, so while well, they look horrible and rusty, I've actually repaired them, repaired all the, the cracks that were in them, done some rust repair sections and so on. So they're in good shape. They just need to be prepped for paint and, um, and finished off. So they're actually closer than they look. So I'm happy with that. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that little series there on uh, installing the radiator support in the front panels on the Inter. As I said in my wrap up of the video there a moment ago, uh, th this is pretty much transferable to other chassis as well. So uh, take what you like, uh, use what you can. Um, I guess the things that take away out of this is uh, don't be put off if it doesn't work the first time. I always sort of go down the, the path, and I don't think it's a negative path, but I always go down the path of if it works the first time, I've done really well, but the likelihood is it won't work the first time. It'll actually take me two attempts, and um, usually the second one comes around much easier because the first one, I'm, I'm prototyping it. I'm working out what's going to work, what's not, and playing around, and then realise, oh, that was silly, I've gone down such a strange path there. And as I said, in hindsight, if I do one of these again, uh, international on a Holden chassis, I'll, I'll do that differently but I'll model it after this because I learn a lot about what works and what doesn't. And, and look, I'll be honest, I'm really happy with this. It's completely serviceable. It re the whole lot removes easily. Um, everything's accessible, it's strong. It does the job, but it took me way too long to work out. But I guess, again, that's prototyping, isn't it? Um, I guess if you're building 20 of them, the first one, the time just gets absorbed, but when you're just building one-offs, which most of mine are, then every little thing takes longer. Anyway, enjoy it. Stay tuned for the next video. I don't know what it is. Hopefully it's interesting to you. So I'll see you then. Take care.